Uh, hi, uh, my name is uh, Stelian Popa. I'm a blacksmith fabricator in Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, I am basically attempting to restore a uh, very old uh, Peter Wright anvil. Now, this anvil is uh, probably at least 150 years old, in my opinion, but who knows, it may be older than 200 years. And uh, I bought this from my uh, uh, old man at the farm. I pay $400. I like the thing. I, uh, you know, kind of restore whatever I could, the horn and all that. But uh, the problem with this, it's uh, the center of it, it's sunk, it's dropped like uh, almost 3 16 of an inch. And uh, also this edge was cracked and broken and was in very bad shape. So uh, I decided to restore this anvil and uh, uh, I look on some literature, information on the, uh, the internet, couldn't find much of it, so I, I decided to, to attend this one based on, you know, my, my knowledge and common sense and uh, hopefully the whole thing would be successful, I don't know, but I'm attempting to do. What I did first, you know, I uh, basically I grinded all the, you know, uh, broken part, the edge and I heat everything to approximately 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I didn't want to heat more than that. I didn't want to take too much of the temper. From what I know, this is a temper about uh, 500, 600 degrees Fahrenheit, if I'm not uh, mistaken. But anyway, it's close to that from what I know. So I heat this to about 300 degrees. And uh, uh, then I you know, grinded everything nice and smooth try to eliminate all the cracks on all the material. I probably want, you know, uh, like probably one sixteen, one eighth of an inch deeper in some some uh, spots. And I welded it back while it was hot over 300 degrees with the uh, 718. I ground it, the whole thing, and uh, now I'm attempting to, uh, to, you know, bring the face, the table to, I mean the face, to a pretty, Pretty nice surface, you know. I'll try to get perfect, I'm not sure I can. Anyway, I took it to a couple of different machine shops, they couldn't do it, they say it's too hard and they just couldn't do it. So, uh, I have to do what I was afraid of, uh, by hand, by grinding and then, you know, trying to get a nice surface. And after that, it's going to be the hardening process and the tempering process. But for right now, the attempt is to, uh, you know, to get the surface nice and smooth. And uh, this is pretty much how I did it. This is a three-quarter solid, you know, bar. I basically hit it to about 300 degrees. I'll show you how I did. That's what I did here, actually. Unfortunately, I didn't film that, but it's same thing. And uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. So I hit the edge right here, pretty much like I'm doing now on this part. And. Of course, I have a, uh, I have one of those, uh, you know, temple stick that shows the temperature. And this particular one, you know, uh, it's supposed to melt when it's about 300, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And that will tell me that uh, I'm very close to that temperature and I can perform you know, the welding, which I did. This is just to show how I did it. So I hit it pretty much to keep the torch at least maybe, I don't know, three, four, five inches, it depends, you know, on the surface, like I did here, and you have to check. I'll try this one, you see, it's starting to melt a little bit, that means I'm getting close to the because this temperature. Yes, this is it. So once I achieved this, you know, I uh, started welding in 2018. So this is basically the test. This is what I did here actually. And uh, now I went to my welding supply and uh, got all kinds of different, you know, different grinding welds. And I'm trying to remove, you know, whatever it's pretty much from here to here. If I get like eight of an inch from here, you know, taper this way and same thing. I think I'm going to do a pretty good job by leveling the whole thing. Uh, but we will see. we'll see, we'll see how it is. Never done this and uh, 
I'm just curious. I, I think I'll do a good job, but you know, I have to take chances. Now these are the things that I'm trying to use, 7 inch head grinder, 7 inch hard wheel. I'm gonna use this, uh, you know, disc also, 7 inches. This is grid uh, 40. This is probably the one that I'm going to finish after everything is done. And also I'm going to try to use this. We'll see which one it works and which one it doesn't. But, uh, Pretty much ready with this. I'll try this one first. So that right. I'll try this thing first, just to have a feeling how it goes. You know, I will uh, attempt to do most of the grinding with a hard deal, and uh, then we'll see. This, or this, I don't know. But uh, I'll try few things at the beginning. There's a lot to be taken out, but I'm pretty sure I can finish today. I, I'm pretty sure. A few hours of good work, I'll do it. Like I told, I, I tried this sloppy disc, I tried this one. The problem with this, it had a hard, hard plate on the back, but it's still flexible, so you cannot get a perfect smooth surface. And it tends to get more on the edges, like we all know. And it's not the best way to go. I tried this one, pretty much happens the same thing. So. Uh, within 10 minutes, I realized that the hard way, the, the hardest is the best way to go. And uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm playing this for probably more than an hour, and I think I removed like uh, probably 1 16 of an inch from this side and this side. So I'm getting very close. I'm, I'm pretty confident that uh, I'll finish today. It's going to look good, and it's going to be, you know, the face is going to be like, like a mirror, basically. And that's what I'm looking for. So. Uh, uh, when you use the hard disk, you know, make sure after you you go all the way, you know, you do a pass, cover the whole surface, you know, you check, you check both this way and also you check this way. So this way you are sure that, you know, you are doing a good job and everything is going to end up being one piece, one nice flat piece of steel, hard steel. And uh, like I said, uh, it's, it's coming good. Uh, you need to have... Uh, a real good experience with the grinder, especially with a heavy one like this. Make sure you wear your glasses and uh, take your time. It's not a rush job, but it can be done. I do not recommend if you have a machine shop around your place. That would be the easiest, the cheapest way to do. But uh, like I said, I've had a few places it didn't work for me, so I have to do it by hand. The important thing is, it's coming. It's just a matter of time and patience. And you know, I think mean, the purpose of the whole thing was to uh, make everything flat, like 
used to be. Eliminate whatever it was, you know, in here and here, like 316, one eighth of one inch, whatever. So uh, after approximately three hours and a half, four hours of work, hard work, I got it pretty much flat and it looks pretty good. I think I'm done. I decided later on to, you know, add a few more passes. I wanted to uh, straighten the edge and I, I really did a good job. So I added a few more passes here and one more pass in the edge. Grinded everything nice and, uh, well, I'm a happy man. Everything came just wonderful. You know, everything is, you know, everything is perfect. It's perfect. It's maybe one hair, you know, but no more than that. So it's, it's very good job. And also this way is perfectly flat all the way. Very good job. Very proud of this. And uh, the next step would be to harden and temper. And that's probably going to be on the lake, on the river, I don't know yet. Perfectamente. Now let's check the ring. And the rebound. It's still good, but I want it better. I'm gonna rehard them, and uh, that would be the final. That's it.